This man is Stanley, a couch and scout for the NBA team, Sixers, and had been working for 30 years. This season, the Sixers were not in their best performance, they ranked low and he needed to find a new prospect to lift the team's performance. He's been everywhere to find the best player the team needed but to no avail, his effort never met his expectations. He met a skillful player but he's addicted to drugs, he also met a tall player that claimed to be 22 but turned out to be faking his age which was too old for his criteria, someone also met his requirements but the moment he played, he broke his leg and got injured. He gave up and returned to America without any signing made. In his office during a meeting, Stanley got into an argument with the team's owner child named Vince. They got different perspectives from each other about the youth prospect they were about to recruit. To secure his job, he put down his ego and let Vince win the argument. The team owner who was also Vince's father, Rex, instead took Stanley's side and against his son. He knew his son's attitude that was egoistic and unreliable. After work, Rex asked Stanley to come with him to the team's practice court and asked why did he back down in the argument with his son before. He wondered because, in his mind, Stanley was strong-willed and would keep his principles no matter what happened. When they arrived at the basketball court, Rex told him to be the new couch assistant. Hearing that made him happy. His dream to become a couch finally came true. Before Rex left, he said to never back down for truth. In his home, Stanley told the good news to his wife and daughter. His wife, Teresa, was happy to hear that and prepared a fancy dinner for the family to celebrate it. In the evening, after taking his daughter to a school event, he intended to have a romantic night with his wife. During their trip to their house, while enjoying the music on the radio, shocking news suddenly interrupted the music. One of the legends in basketball who was also the owner of the Sixers was declared dead. In the funeral parlor, Stanley met a lot of basketball athletes and important figures in basketball. He then approached Rex's daughter, Kat, to show his condolences. He was still optimistic about the team's future since he thought, Kat would replace his father as the owner but she told him that she would stay as the team's manager and the owner of the team will be Vince, his brother. Hearing that, Stanley was shocked. He was afraid that his job would be much harder with Vince as his boss since both of them never had a good relationship for long. Three months had passed since Vince took the chairman position. While coaching the team, Stanley was asked to meet Vince in his office without any explanation. That day, Vince demoted Stanley back to his former position in the scout division. Stanley couldn't agree with the decision. He couldn't stand the last 30 years being far away from his family. He even missed nine birthdays of his daughter. Vince arrogantly said that it was not a request but an order. He couldn't stand the argument between them and told Stanley if he could find a single youth prospect, he would give back his position as the coach assistant. Stanley knew his position and couldn't fight back but agreed with the terms and backed off. The next day, Stanley started his job back in the scouting division again and took a flight to Spain to look for a young prodigy on his list, but when he arrived, his effort was in vain since the young talent was injured and couldn't play. He was disappointed and decided to stay a night in Spain to watch a street basketball game. When he watched the game, he was impressed with a guy named Bo Cruz and decided to follow him to his place. Cruz was mad at first and thought of Stanley as gay but when explained, he finally let Stanley enter his house and introduced him to his mother and daughter. Cruz's life was concerning. He had divorced his wife and had to live with his mother and daughter since his father left them for another woman. He was the breadwinner of the family and had to play street basketball to win the bet and fulfill his family's needs. Stanley then told his intention to bring Cruz with him to join the Sixers, but Cruz refused the invitation since he had to work as a cleaning service the next day. Stanley then explained that a professional basketball player's minimum wage was $900,000. Hearing that, Cruz's mother told her son to take sick leave and together left for America. It was Cruz's family's first experience taking a flight, especially in business class. Cruz was so happy with the service. So happy he went to Stanley's seat just to tell him that the flight attendant gave him so many delicious foods. As they arrived at the airport, Stanley wondered why some officer took Cruz to the interrogation office. After waiting for a while, Cruz was finally released, thanks to Stanley's lawyer friend. From the interrogation, 
it was found that Cruz had a criminal record. He once beat someone and was reported to the police. Stanley was disappointed by Cruz's dishonesty. Stanley told him that everyone had that dark past that nobody wanted to tell to anyone, but the criminal records were different. Once recorded, that would never be erased for the rest of your life. The next day, Stanley invited Cruz to do some warm-ups on the Sixers court. The other players were betting on who could jump the highest. Cruz took his chance and jumped far higher than any other professional player, even without proper basketball shoes. That left the other players shocked. Sadly, when Stanley explained how talented Bo Cruz was, Vince once again rejected him without any clear reason. Vince intended to make Stanley's work more difficult just because of a personal matter between them and seemed like wanted to make him resign from his job. During the night, Stanley told Teresa about his problem. Since the team rejected Cruz, he intended to support his life with his own money. Hearing the plan, Teresa was pessimistic but didn't back off and kept supporting her husband. The next day, Stanley secretly registered Cruz for an NBA basketball player's first stage selection. Vince was also there, registering his youth talent named Kermit. Vince realized Stanley's action and scolded him for acting without his permission and arrogantly told him that Cruz wouldn't make it and would be beaten by his talent, Kermit. After warming up, Stanley told him to show his best performance to the basketball seniors from other teams and the judges. Take a seat for a minute. No. Cruz didn't make it. Stanley was disappointed with him. He played well at first but then got emotional and lost his focus on the game. Not long after, Vince and his talents appeared and provoked him. Vince told him to go search for another player that can outplay Cruz. Stanley couldn't stand Vince's attitude and shouted at him about his resignation from his job. Vince and the other Sixers laughed at his resignation and left. Inside the court, Cruz was seen down. He was stressed out with his performance that evening. Stanley approached him. He told Cruz that until now, he was forced to play basketball to fulfill his family's needs. That was not enough. He asked Cruz whether he loved basketball or not, if not, he could leave for Spain at any moment and nobody will stop him, but if he do love basketball, it wouldn't also be enough. He also needed obsession. Stanley believed that the only thing that could beat a gift was an obsession and Cruz needed that. Stanley's words ignited the fire in Cruz's heart. At the dawn, since it is impossible to enter the Sixers, Stanley intended to train Cruz on his own to make him a star player that every NBA team wanted to recruit. He trained Cruz to his limit. Go, move it, kid, yep. I like it. Go, go, go. That's it, man. That's it. What are you doing? Don't stop. Oh, we're going to be here a lot, bud. Keep going. Come on. Tell you, I'm going to hit your heels, bro. Stanley didn't motivate him anymore. He knew that if he wanted to be the best, he had to motivate himself and fight for it. He trained hard for weeks and wished to get recruited by the Sixers until one evening. Stanley invited Cruz to dinner with his family while his friend from the Sixers called and told him that Cruz was banned from any NBA player selection. Turned out, during a talk show, Vince discovered Cruz's criminal record to the public and also told that he had fired Stanley from the Sixers' management. Cruz accidentally watched the talk show and went away. Stanley then followed him and tried to apologize, but no matter how hard he tried, Cruz was disappointed. All his hard work for the past weeks was all in vain. He was banned from every NBA team. After taking Cruz to the hotel, Stanley returned to his house, and with guilt in his heart, he tried to call all his relations and colleagues to help him put Cruz's name in an NBA selection program. Sadly, nobody could help him out. In the morning, when having breakfast, Stanley's daughter had an idea. She once made a viral video about a basketball game highlight. Since no team management wanted to recruit him, she suggested introducing him via social media. She was sure that if Cruz's video went viral, any team would definitely sign him. Without any hesitation, Stanley asked one of his friends, a former NBA player, to introduce Cruz to a street basketball community and settled a challenge to beat Cruz for $1,000. The plan started. Stanley's plan was a success. Cruz went viral and many TV stations focused on his performance. Since he had so many fans, everyone forced the NBA management to let him enter the NBA player qualification. The NBA finally let Cruz enter the NBA national qualification. Something seemed off. Despite finally being able to attend the qualification, Cruz seemed sad all day. The next day, 
Stanley surprised Cruz by inviting Cruz's mother and daughter to America. Seeing that made Cruz's day and wiped off sadness on his face. The selection day finally came. Cruz finally met Kermit and Vince again. Cruz managed to surpass Kermit's performance in physical assessment and made the judges and other team scouts impressed. The next day was the final assessment. The players had to play to show their best performance to the judges and scouts. Cruz played very well at first until he heard his daughter shouted to support her dad. Kermit who saw that used the chance to provoke Cruz. Hearing Kermit talked bad about his daughter insulted him and pushed Kermit off. Anyway, I come see you here. Since that day, many TV stations showed bad news about Cruz. Stanley was finally given up. The next morning, Stanley took Cruz to the airport to catch his flight back home. Cruz said sorry to disappoint him and thanked him for all he had done to him. Stanley seemed hard to let him go and Cruz felt the same. When Stanley was about to exit the airport, suddenly one of his friends from the Sixers called him. He said that he had secretly listed Cruz on one of the closed qualifications for NBA players and was sure that many famous team scouts would be there to see some hidden talents to recruit. Stanley rushed to find Cruz to stop him from his flight. Since the selection session would be held within an hour, Stanley along with Cruz rushed to the venue and prepared for the game. At the venue, Cruz saw Kermit. He told himself to play better and focused. He said that he would play for his passion and avoid any provocation that might loosen his focus. Seeing Cruz's performance made the scouts impressed. Since the qualification was not as strict as the previous one, other scouts could assess the player more objectively. While attending the venue, Stanley saw Kat. She said that she had taken the chairman position from his brother. She said that since his brother took the job, he never did any good signings and worsened the team's performance. Kat also asked Stanley to be the Sixers coach assistant again, just like what her father willed. Five months later in a game between the Sixers and the Celtics, Stanley was seen entering the court with the other coaches. Before the game started, Stanley approached Cruz and greeted him. Turned out Cruz played for the opposing team, the Celtics. After the player selection five months ago, many teams tried to sign him. And Cruz decided to sign for the Celtics. Even though Cruz wasn't played for his team, Stanley was glad to see his protege finally become an NBA star, just like what he wanted.